Okay, so maybe uh, I should start. Uh, here's a, uh, a list of numbers. They, they will represent the eigenvalues uh, of, uh, of um, the graphs ADE. And uh, let me write the theorem. Any graph G on the AD list has adjacency matrix norm. Let me lift it uh, up. This is a new part from uh, last night. <laughs> yes. So you see my point in the picture up there, yes, is that uh, 
uh, if we broadcast something uh, to the stars about the mathematics side of our civilization, we should start with pi, certainly, which is involved in these things anyway. And then, just to show that we have discovered symmetry, we should broadcast the graph uh, E8. Now, uh, E8 is a bit hard to broadcast, so instead of that, I thought about sending the equation 3 plus 5 equals 9. Now, of course, they may think that we are a completely degenerate civilization. However, if they have started to understand symmetry, they'll figure out that this, is, uh, this represents precisely the graph E8. Yes, uh, let me show you how. So there's a list there, do you see? Uh, the list is which numbers, basically, among the eigenvalues of the graph An, yes, which are 1 up to n, which numbers are eigenvalues of the graphs d, n, e6, e7, e8, yes? So uh, let us uh, note here uh, the only the only multipli uh, the only multiplicity bigger than one is two n minus one for d n with n even. And we shall have uh, very concrete uh, interpretations of this, including the fact that, uh, that uh, this will lead in the future to uh, a non-commutativity. And hopefully, actually, that, that uh, future as I just realized might be today. So, uh, Okay, so this is, a, this is a statement here, and let me show you. Now, you see, uh, Arthur asked me, uh, if you remember, there was an equation about the triple point, which I was intending to give as a homework last time, right? Remember that for a graph like E, uh, things grow in, a, let's call it quasi-arithmetic progression, Yes, with, uh, which is multiplication by quantum 2, not by 2, right? So, uh, and uh, I looked at that equation carefully and it turned out to be equivalent to this one. Yes, and I would like to show you just a bit how, uh, how, this, would, uh, how this would look like. Uh, just a second. So, uh, the... Uh, How do I unmute the... Oh, it's a program volume? No. The, how do I unmute uh, the, uh, the projector? Uh, I should be... Oh, image mute. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. So let me... I'll, I'll lower it. No problem. Here we have it. So nothing about these graphs is, uh, is accidental. Uh, here, here are the things in Mathematica. Uh, look, we can plot here sine, the equation in the form sine of 3a plus sine of 5a is equal to sine of 9a. Remember, we would have a denominator over sine of something, but since this is a linear equation, we can dispense of that. Yes, and look, this is a sum sine 3a plus sine 5a. 
and this is sine of 9a. Okay, I got the figures right. And here is the same with some add notations. Do you see? Uh, look, this is a sum sine 3a plus sine 9a. Uh, look where they meet. Here it's a little bit, uh, maybe a little bit tough to see, it, but there is a meeting here at 1, 1 over 30. Yes, so this is 1 over 30. At 7 over 30, 11, 13, 17, uh, 19, yes. And uh, my, 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 I, I, I think I, I may have forgotten one, which is 23, right? Did I forget it also on the blackboard? Yeah, absolutely. So let's uh, correct it because I took it from Mathematica. By the way, I didn't want to look in the... So let's uh, uh -huh. ah yes. Do you see here? There are there are not seven. There are there should be eight eigenvalues. So please correct this. Yes. So uh, look at E7, and the intersection values are also quite nice, yes? And the uh, E7, if you have any questions, please don't, uh, don't hesitate to. So this is for E7, the equation is 2 plus 4 equals 8, yes? Sine of uh, aha, ah, yes, 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 absolutely. All of them have uh, thank you. You see, if I if I was uh, devious, I could say that I had left such things just to check whether you're. Alert or not, but I won't pretend. So, uh, okay, and uh, and uh, it's out of here. So certainly, uh, yes, and it was nine here, and it's actually yes. This is nine, and uh, look, look at the graph. This is a graph without notations. I'll send these graphs to everybody in the course. Uh, Do you see they intersect exactly? Ah, which sum to take? Um, here, uh, thank you, that's a very good question. That was uh, done a bit last time. So you see, I took uh, this. Uh, this was supposed to be one, two, yes, three, four. Five, yes, and it starts with a zero here, yes. So let let us give this a name: quasi arithmetic progression. So this is a way the quantum representations of SL two work. Yes, here we have a n minus 1 plus a n plus 1 is equal to quantum 2 times a n. Yes? And uh, if we have here something, do you see this should be proportional to uh, 0 quantum 1 quantum 2, quantum 3, yes? Right, the arm. Yes? So this means that this here is 5 times 3, 5 times 2 over 3, and this one is 5 over 3. 
yes? And here, this is uh, 5 over 2 by exactly the same token, yes? And the equation is that quantum 2 times 5, yes, is equal to, this is this 5 in the middle, is equal to quantum 4 plus quantum 5 over 2 plus quantum 5 times quantum 2 over quantum 3. Yes, and the homework, somebody should record it, maybe Chase, uh, record it as homework to go from this equation to the uh, to the one on the blackboard with 3 plus 5 equals 9, yes? So I'm saying that this equation is equivalent to 3 plus 5 equals 9, after you multiply and all that, and uh, try also to uh, to prove that one just with quantum numbers. So there are two two uh, two pieces of homework. Yes, and uh, um, very good. And if you work in number theory, you should check whether you have found this equation anywhere. In general, try to try to find out, find this out. Yes. Uh, so you see, these equations uh, encode exactly the spectrum of the graphs uh, E6, E78. The other ones are uh, the other ones uh, need a little bit more more for discussion, but they're basically n is equal to n plus two, and uh, for for dn. And uh, 2 is, uh, I think, something like 2 is 0 or so. And uh, this is for dn. And uh, for d, uh, so this is k is equal to, uh, well, I, I uh, so, uh, and for an, it's n is equal to n plus 1. But I didn't, uh, I'm not, uh, Entirely sure. The, this is by and large. These are by and large the equations. I, I didn't check these very carefully. Yes. So n is equal to n plus one would give you. Uh, uh, oh, well, by the way, so that would give you just uh, two curves, uh, two sine curves, which intersect from time to time, spaced a little bit. Uh, look at the six here. Yes. Uh, again, uh, let's plot it. Do you see, look at this equation, uh, uh, 1 plus 3 equals 7, 1 plus 5 equals, uh, what? It's definitely not the 1, E6 is 1 plus 3 equals 7, yes, and, uh, and this is, this is, uh, the plot, as you see, it intersects exactly in six places, which are the eigenvalues of the graph E6. Yes? And the Coxeter number, uh, there's, a, uh, there's an AN. Uh, this gives you the general picture for AN. Yes, where you have just... Uh, and uh, so those are not as interesting, and there's a beautiful one for E8 a fine, E8 a fine, which is uh, something that your uh, grade school teacher would approve of, unlike these ones. Uh, so this one is uh, is uh, uh, two. No, E8 a fine. No, no this is. It's not this one. This one is E8. E8 uh, fine is here. 
is 4 plus 6 equals 10. Do you see? Uh, notice that even this equation, as simple as it is, it has, uh, uh, it, you take it with denominator 60, you see you solve it numerically. Uh, now as to this, this was a question of Arthur, how should they solve the homework? Which was a very good question, and uh, we had a little argument on this, I must say. Uh, the reason is that I enter always through the basement of this building, and if you noticed, there are not collections of uh, manuscripts there, but there are big tanks full of liquid nitrogen, yes? So in this building, people are measuring things. So I went on the side of uh, doing it experimentally and then proving things. So um, here's the, the thing. Uh, look, we have, uh, if you solve it, you solve it numerically, and then you multiply here by 30, yes? So you see, you first solve it like this. Then you put uh, uh, 30 in front. And wow, these are exactly the exponents minus 1, something like this, yes? Uh, 7, 11, do you see 13, yes? Uh, so they're a little bit shifted, but they're clearly related to the, uh, to the 8, yes? So this, this should be uh, the equation for the 8 are fine. And if you have... Uh, uh, Non-ADE, look, then you, you do something like this, yes? And you get some numbers, some fractions of pi, which are obviously not rational at all, yes? So uh, probably, and I was just going to take a snapshot and send them to the mathematics building to Kurt McMullen, because they may be related to uh, hyperbolic geometry. Yes, the in the coffee room. Yes, yes. Well, I'll I'll keep this with. Uh, you see, the easiest way to communicate, just like with a star broadcast, you know, is to send some numbers. So, the easiest question uh, is to s visually to see graphs. Yes, and otherwise to send numbers. Yes. So we'll see whether these are. Uh, these numbers are there. I haven't seen this equation before, so this was just found, uh, found as I said last night. Now, uh, let's try to, uh, to go for, uh, for uh, symmetry and uh, And let's, uh, let's uh, try to do one uh, nice uh, graph. So we're going to take the simplest graph, which is non-trivial, dn, d4. This is a graph d4. And look at it from all points of view. Now, what I advise you to do is exactly the same when you, when you research something. Yes, uh, take one example that you can compute and blow it to pieces. I mean, there should be not the slightest thing about it that you haven't computed explicitly, numerically, uh, put into tables, and so on, yes? And since these things are fundamental, you're going to find something uh, surprising, guaranteed. And as you can see, you can find even a, a weird equation that would shock your, uh, your elementary school teacher, yes? C plus 5 equals 9 of all things. So, there we are, and we take the D4 here, and it has a couple of symmetries, yes? The symmetries are D3, uh, uh, S symmetric, the symmetric group on three points. And, by the way, I should make one more list before we continue of the, uh, the list of the uh, graphs which are not on the list, which come in a way which I'm going to describe uh, next time. 
they come out of uh, these ones, namely there is a, there are graphs. Uh, so if you take the a n and you uh, you bend it like this. So this is a n and this is n odd. And you bend it like this and you take its some equivalent class equivalence classes. Um, you're going to get this one, and this stays big here. So, and this one is the graph C, C4. Yes, so Cn, which is related to symplectic geometry. And, uh, if you take dn, and you do the same, you're going to get this graph. Which is B4. And these two are related to orthogonal, to the orthogonal group. And if you take uh, D4 and you put it like this, you're going to get this graph, which is here, and this would stay long and this is uh, this is a graph uh, these would be very short so this is a graph g2 and if you take the graph e6 and you write it like this you're going to get the graph F4. And by the way, the graphs uh, Dn as you can see from the Coxeter number, there's just another way to take, and I'm going to make the same figure, but another way to take orbifolds, and this would give you So this is again an AN, and this is a D. By the way, they have the same Coxeter number. Sorry, let me lift, him, lift these things up. Yes. So to imagine this kind of orbifold, what you do is you take a, uh, you take, uh, you imagine that there are vector spaces, some kind of vector spaces at the vertices. So vector spaces at vertices. And you have a group here, the symmetry is Z mod 2, which acts. And in this case, uh, you, you have here the orbits, and the one in the middle, which is acted by Z mod 2, splits into 2, right? According to the characters of Z mod 2, plus and minus. Fast, can you see some other things among our list of graphs? 
uh, and among the others with symmetry, which would, which would be subject to this. Fast, fast. E6. And actually, let me suggest you, you, you may look even closer. Not even a figure. What about this one? You can run it backwards as well. Do you see it has here a nice orbit? Here, yes, there's an orbit. And then the others split in two, yes? And you would get this back. So know that they have the same Coxeter number. So once again, the, this would be an orbit, yes? And this is Zemo 2 acting on these three. And it splits them exactly like that, yes? This, uh, and uh, in all these cases, do you see 6, for instance, would give you what? Fast, if you apply that kind of symmetry. Let's see who sees it first. Yes, it gives you the same E6. Wonderful. Do you see? If you apply this, then these two become uh, one, and this one breaks into two. Yes? Right? And similarly here, this one, what's a, what, what happens here? You get somebody else. The same, yes, because this broke into three. These are the characters of Zemo 3. Yes, and uh, it was the same. Now, what we're going to do is build some uh, crystallography out of them. In particular, they will have angles, and the angles are 90 degrees if there is no edge. So the vertices are vectors now. Yes? So here, vertices are vectors. And uh, the angle is, this is pi over 4. And if there is an edge, it's uh, pi over, uh, it's uh, 2 pi over 3. Yes, and this is pi over 2. Yes, and 2 pi over 3 for one edge. Uh, so if you take these, then the whole vector system will have a, uh, will have a, uh, a symmetry, right? Due to the symmetry of the group. And now here you project, project, project on plane, on hyperplane maybe, of, uh, on subspace rather, subspace, on the invariant subspace. So project the vectors on the invariant subspace. And you see if you have, uh, for instance, uh, D, this is an A3. Yes, you will have here, these are three vectors. And when you project them, so they'll have some 120 degrees. It doesn't matter. When you project them on the plane of symmetry, you see, this vector will be shorter. So under Z mod 2. This is shorter by root 2. If you take two orthogonal vectors and project them on the plane of symmetry, yes, they get to be square root of 2 times shorter, right? So this is, uh, and the sign convention is this toward as the inequality sign. Yes, there are many conventions. I found this one to be the easiest one to remember. Yes, so you, you put the shorter one at the, at the tip. So this is for, for several edges here. 
Yes, the, the edge is oriented with this shorter, yes? And if you have a d4, then you have three vectors which are orthogonal. These are three vectors which are orthogonal, and when you project them on the axis, this is so under z mod 3. Yes, this is shorter, shorter by root 3, by a factor of root 3. Yes, if you have three orthogonal vectors and you project them on the middle axis. Any questions? Yes. Well, we'll find it in, in various guises. This is the most elementary way to think of it, really. So uh, I cannot make it more concrete now, but when you we'll use them, you'll see. Basically, what we'll do is work with those graphs as if they were a n or whatever under some symmetry, yes? So when you do symplectic geometry, you don't work with some... Uh, the roots from which you span something, just a symplectic thing, you typically work with an AN with matrices subject to some symmetry. Yes? So that's, that's how we're going to do. The conclusion, the net conclusion of all this is that we need to look only at the ADEs. Yes? And uh, moreover, these are important because they will hold also in the higher case and by the way, you see if you plant your vegetables here, as you see in uh, my bag, you never know what you're going to get. So this is a graph A4, yes? But of course our course, the name of our course is higher representation theory. As so this is a higher graph AN. Yes, and as you can imagine, it has a beautiful spectral theory, which is uh, very much like uh, what you saw. In fact, I just kind of uh, found it uh, properly very recently. And this is the, uh, the graph AN, one, uh, one higher. This one I just uh, made yesterday. It was destroyed in transportation, but this version has, uh, has also... Uh, the parity, if you notice, these have, uh, the, this is a trivalent graph. Can you see? Yes. There's three colors, and it's supposed to be oriented. It goes from, uh, I don't know, white, yellow, blue, and then back white. Yes. And this one goes uh, uh, with uh, white, yellow, blue, uh, orange. Yes, and back. So this is a graph AN, uh, AN uh, two dimensions higher. Yes? And people who worked in representation theory can recognize it as a vile uh, alcove. Yes? So this is a vile chamber would be the cone spanned by this and the vile alcove. Yes? So these are... And... Uh, uh, I think I asked you, yes. Uh, what's the generalization of uh, all those uh, quantum twos? Do you see lots of quantum twos there, which are two cosine of... two cosine of pi over something, yes? What should it be for this? One. Instead of multiplying by 2, you multiply by... Oops! Look, oh, come on, guys, this is just the first grade. Do you see? Uh, yes, after 2, yes, you multiply by 3 there. Yes, so this, is, uh, this would be uh, multiplication by quantum 3, yes. And this is something which is known by physicists who call this one 1. This one is called, any physicist here? No. 
Oh, the user's names exactly numbers. This is three, right? This is three. This one is three bar. Yes. And this one, maybe you know, probably Arthur knows this one. No, this is the eight. So it's the eight of uh, SL3. Yes. So this is an eight-dimensional, uh, the eight-dimensional one in SL3. Yes. Maybe uh, I should think. Maybe ten is one of these. Yes. Yes. Uh, we'll use either, I mean, we'll use the roots of uh, SL3 here, but we'll also think of uh, SU3. We'll discuss this uh, just in a moment. You see the, uh, the fundamental part is little SL3, the Lie algebra, yes? And when you exponentiate a Lie algebra, it's exactly like you exponentiate the complex numbers. Yes, you can exponentiate the whole thing, and then you'll get uh, the group over C, yes, you get uh, something like SL of something C, yes. Uh, then you can exponentiate the reals, yes, and you'll get SL to R or something like this. Then you can exponentiate the purely imaginary ones, and then you get a circle. That's how you get SU, yes. And then finally, if you in number theory, you may exponentiate a lattice and get uh, finite groups of Lie type. Yes? So, uh, so all of these have the same underlying structure. Very good. So we continue here and we take the symmetries of the group D4 fast. It has a group Z mod 3, which, as you see, in two different ways, it gives rise to all kinds of other graphs, yes? Gs and so on. So let's write it uh, nicely as a, as, a, uh, as a map here. You see one such example. It would be something like this. And here, let me use some uh, yellow graph maybe as a connecting one. And let's take a non-trivial one. So this would be a, uh, this would be a nice uh, graph map, yes? So here you have SIM3, which acts. But, um, uh, Our colleague, who uh, should tell us his name, uh, asked me about the mass, yes? And we're going to produce more symmetries, and we're going to measure their mass. So, and, uh, so D4, I'm saying, has some extra symmetries which you don't see with the naked eye. And in fact, all the AD graphs. So let me, uh, let's take the following thing to define it. I thought that the best thing was to make to do one example here. So this is we're going to take the graph D4. The first one we'll put it in this form, and the second one in this form. And we're going to connect them. like this. So these are auxiliary graphs. And what we're going to do is map every cell This is a cell. We're going to map it by some number W, which we won't write quite often. This maps into W of the cell 
in C. So put a number in every square. And this will be a model which physicists call the plaquette. This is called the Boltzmann weight. And this is a model, this is a plaquette. model. It's clear that the French worked on it and uh, this is a plaquette model in statistical mechanics. Uh, we won't write usually the W at all, we'll simply write by notation that this thing is in C. So let me write here that this is in the spirit of quantum mechanics. Map an edge, map vertices, edges into linear combinations of the same. So this is, uh, we're starting here the fundamentally new part in the course. Uh, these were introduced uh, by me ab around in the 19, uh, late 1980s, I think the cells, although not uh, maybe exactly on this. And uh, having a, uh, a mapping an edge into a linear combination is not enough. So we're going to, uh, to think of it, in fact, as phi. There's a map phi, which sends an edge E It sends it into the sum over all the edges of arrival E prime of uh, these numbers. And this would be here I and J. This is E and this is E prime times E prime. And this is on the position I, J. And this number is a scalar. So it's actually, it sends each edge into a linear combination of uh, edges, but a matrix of linear combinations. Yes, and I and J. Now, uh, what? Okay, and uh, this is a map to. We should also mention the gauge, which means for physicists, freedom of choice. which is that, uh, and I'm going to write it here schematically, if you have, uh, for instance, uh, if you have two edges, 
then you can act on them, act by the two by two unitaries on the edges. So you can change every edge into a linear combination of the other edges. Yes? And accordingly on all the on all the cells which use that that edge. Yes. So this means that here you act act with scalars. You'll see in a moment. And let me write fast the requirement. So the two graphs, by the way, let me just write here that in principle, they are G and G prime, not necessarily the same. And the requirement is the following. A cell depends on four indices, just like the Riemann curvature tensor. And in fact, we shall see that they give a Riemann curvature like transport on graphs. And amazingly, E6 and E8 are flat, but E7 is not flat. So the requirement is the following. Uh, make cells which depend on four edges into matrices. So if you fix ij vertices ij and you look at the cell like this, so this is i here and this is j, and you look at This map should be a scaled, scaled unitary for every ij. And if you fix the others, then this should be also a scaled unitary. So we shall call the name, one, one of the names is a Q symmetry for such an object. Quantum is overused, but Q suggests correctly that we work with Q numbers and also bi unitary connection. Well, you see there's a set here. From this set to this set. So the set of edges this way to the set, the set of paths this way, set of paths to this set of paths, yes? So, uh, you see, we, we shouldn't think of matrices or, well, maybe I, I should say uh, a strong thing, but that's, uh, that's why I think that you should not use numbers in mathematics unless you do number theory. Uh, otherwise, look for concrete things, yes? And these are concrete sets, yes? And uh, one last word before uh, uh, the, the um, scaled here is exactly 
quantum i times quantum j not quantum i but this is these are the, this is a peron frobenius eigenvector exactly the one that we had there yes so th that that gives you the scaling so it should be a unitary times uh, times a number yes Amazingly, up to the scaling, we saw that uh, each of the graphs AD has a finite number of, uh, of these Q symmetries. And uh, D has uh, the usual six plus another two, eight of them. And uh, that's, what, uh, that's what we'll study and we'll go much, much higher with, uh, with that, yes. So uh, these these things encode everything we'll uh, use to make the usual representation theory. So it will be a completely new approach to representation theory this way. We'll see each other uh, on Wednesday. And uh, please, once again, there is a uh, there is a, a position which would pay you handsomely for. Uh, for a few hours of teaching, maybe not the pay, but uh, even if you're not interested in the money, you have some teaching requirements at Harvard, which could be satisfied by this. So uh, uh, the person in charge very uh, nicely, uh, Maureen, uh, agreed to give us uh, credit for a full section upon me writing all the various requirements, which are among others, there's now a center, the box center for uh, in the science building. And if you have questions, that's the best place to, uh, to do it. It's a kind of office hours with 10 cameras pointed out at you and 20 microphones. Yes, so uh, apparently it was originally used to take shy Harvard students who uh, could not uh, stay well in front of audience and put them in front of all that machinery in the hope that that, that would help them overcome their shyness, which is a vain, uh, vain hope. So now it is used for our for our uh, uh, kind of open office hours, and we're due there very soon. So please join us.